I'm going to have to set this down. This looks shit. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Tom Wilson. Welcome back to the Northern Gamblers podcast. Um, this week, we'll be looking at two-year-old champions weekend or meeting at um, Newmarket, including the Cesarovic. Um, we might also talk about Chepstow for some reason, some some yak reasons. Uh, I'm joined by James Dunkley, as usual. Hello, James, looking fresh. Hi, Tom. How are you? Yeah, good. Um, and we're also joined by Jacob Trotter from the racingtips.net. Hello, Jacob. Hi, Tom. James. Going well today. <laughs> yeah, going really well, mate. Um, we're going to start with... Um, I know where we'll start. Um, no, we'll start on Saturday um, at Newmarket. Um, so we're going to see a load of good two-year-olds on Saturday at Newmarket. Um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a great meet in this one. And we've also got a nice um, big field handicap to get stuck into as well. Um, the first race is 145, which is a nursery handicap. Um, I propose we skip it. What do you think? Agreed. Agreed. Good. Right, we'll start at 220, which is the Zetland Stakes, which is a group three over one mile two. Um, a bit of a, an intro. So there is a Aidan O'Brien angle here, as there often is with the um, Septem September, October two-year-old races. So it won it last year with Norway and in 2017 with Kew Gardens. Um, he is taking mythical who's by Camelot and is out of a dam called Inchmina. Um, she was also the mother of Johann Strauss for Bally Doyle. Um, there are two I like here, um, but I'll go to Jacob first. Who do you like for the Zetlands? Anyone? I had a small look at it. I didn't particularly like Vulcan Star's form, so that kind of threw me off that one straight away. Um, it's a I mean, there's not much to go on, really, is there, on most of the form. I kind of liked Miss Yoda's last run. It didn't look that good a race at the time, but the second went and won a nursery off 80. The sixth went and won next time out, and the seventh won two starts later off 73. So it's probably a half-decent race, and she already looks like she needs 10 furlongs. She don't really get going in the first two races until the last furlong. It's a tough race, and if you're going to take on the favourite, I think she'd be the one. There'll be a bit around for Tritonic, I think, as well. Uh, kind of stranger horse that was bought to be a juvenile hurdler winning in the group three, but you never know. And Mythical was impressive last time. It's not a race you really want to be getting involved in, but Miss Yoda was kind of the one I ended up on in that. Yeah. Um, James, where did you land? I haven't looked at it. <laughs> I actually haven't looked at that one. It's going to be it's going to be a good podcast. He's in a good mood. <laughs> look at that. I've looked, looked at the others. I just haven't I'm haven't had a chance to look at that one yet. <laughs> um the two that I liked were um I thought there was potential upside, significant potential upside. Partly because of the the fact that they absolutely smashed up their um their last two fields, so we don't really know what the rating is. And actually, the time figures are pretty decent. I've actually got the same time figure for both Vulcan Star and Mythical. Um, so obviously, Mythical smashed up that field at Gowron, was it last time out? Um, yeah, smashed up that um, field at Gowron at the end of December by eight and a half lengths. Um, so it's impossible at the moment to know um kind of where where the ceiling is but you know what i mean like what actual level um mythical can run to um at the current moment um it's also hard to know on form as well because there's only been one run, run around since so um but the the speed figure was decent um vulcan star actually i do quite like as well um smashed up a field at goodwood um on the 23rd of august by six lengths um there's a bit of form come out of that there's a, a horse called oslo um which is a it's a gosden uh, horse that came out only one at class five level actually um on the all weather i think last week or a couple of weeks ago um i'm gonna go with the trainer angle because you know they're just showing a, a shed load of improvement and um, decent time figure smashed up the field last time out on soft ground um in a race where Aidan O'Brien's got a great record, I'm going to go with Mythical. 
So, and it's mythical for me, and it's Miss Yoda for Jacob, yeah? Yeah, Miss Yoda. I mean, it's not it's not like a, a massive bet race, is it really? They're all going to be better next year, so it's just one of them. It's not a max bet, is it? Um, and I would say it's a min bet. It's not <laughs> it's a min bet. Of a, it's kind of an interest. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, good. 255. Um, it's the Autumn Stakes Group 3 race over a mile. Um, I mean, we've seen um, some decent types in this in recent years. Last year, um, we're still waiting for the video, um, but Persian King won this last year. Um, and we're still waiting for the, the mythical blogger video. Um, and I mean, you had Gaieth winning this in 2017 as well. Um, I think, James, after this in 2017, you were loading up for the derby in 2018, and then he was injured, weren't you? Um, which was a bit gutting. Um, to my angle into this, right, is um, I've mentioned like a couple there, but I do think Godolphin really like it. Um, the the two for six in the last ten years, three places. Um, I quite like this Al Sahel um, by Dabawi out of Scirocco Star. Um, we'll definitely need further in time. Probably it probably isn't a bad prep race for the Derby really um, in the longer term. Um, was third in the Solario, but I think the Solario is going to work out as a really good race. It was a good race on the clock, and I think positive is also going to run well um, when that horse comes back out. So I really liked Al Sahail. Um, I know Kamiko got beat last time out. Um, I actually tipped it. I think it went down like a short head or something. But I, I, I'm, I rate the scenar- Solario on the clock. So and I think Al Sahel can show a lot more going up from seven to a mile. So that is going to be my selection. Um, James, do you agree with me? Do you like Godolphin horses in this? I do agree with you. Actually, I I like, I like Al Sahel as well. Um, I watched the Solario back earlier, and as you mentioned, his his I mean, his trip's going to be a mile and a half next year, obviously. Um, so this step up from seven to um to eight furlongs should should really suit him i actually think it'll suit him more than it will the favorite Moller fan um he obviously he's going to be the exciting one because he beat that um which is it wichita yeah. who goes in the dewhurst and but if you watch that race I, I, I felt like he wasn't going away at the line if anything they were coming back to him so then he steps up that extra furlong here and i don't and he's out of a guinea's winner um and i think a, another miler as well i think he's um out of a, a decent miler but i just think i just think also hill could improve he wasn't he wasn't he could he didn't really have the pace for the seven furlongs in the scenario but he wasn't like losing any ground yeah. um so yeah he was he was the one i came down on as well jacob do you agree is it like a, a smash up trio one of the race i was very interested in uh, Al- Alistair Hill's uh, probably a horse for next year, obviously. I mean, it's half brother to Telecaster and Starcaster. It's mile four is going to be his trip. He might win tomorrow, tomorrow or Saturday even, but he wouldn't be one for me. Molothem is related to a load of sprinters, I believe, is what James was on about. Um, yeah, Perfection, he was a seven furlong horse, uh, runs for David O'Mara. So his trip will probably be a mile. It might just be a bit too fast for Alta Hill, but it's not something I'm massively interested in. Good. So Alta Hill for me and James and Jacob is abstaining from the autumn stakes. Glad you lads have brought some opinions to the podcast um, tonight. Um <laughs> <laughs> we spent too too long looking at sales horses instead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So we've got fifteen hundred horses to look through for the sales for the end of October. So that is, um, I mean, I go to bed at ten pm, but that's what you lads are doing up till one or two, isn't it? So, um, the Dewhurst then. So the absolute monster obviously wins. I mean, obviously four to eleven and that. Um, let me tell you about how much of a monster Pinotubo is. Um. Best time figure in the last two years. That's probably quite obvious. Like So well clear on my figures. I've got Pinatubo seven lengths clear of Quarto's run 
at the Curra um, in the same meeting last year on the 16th of September. Pinatubo's run was on the 17th of September. So I think Pinatubo, well, I know Pinatubo is the best two-year-old of the last two years, and I think Pinatubo is probably the best two-year-old of the last five years. That's probably not an original opinion. Um, Pinatubo is going to smash them up by five lengths, get on the blogger distance bets. Um, so, general question, what do you think about Pinatubo? What do you think about Pinatubo's trip next year and the chance for the Classics? And do you think there's any each way angle into this because, or any without the favourite angle into this because Pinatubo wins? Who are you Jacob. asking? Jacob. I think Pinatubo's trip's going to be a mile. I don't think that's massively out there. Um, it probably wins the Guineas, doesn't he? If he gets there, that's usually just another two year old race at the start of the season. Yeah. After that, Depends if anything improves and catches up to him, but he's, he's more than likely going to win this pretty easy. Um, I know you two both like positive each way in this. Couldn't put anyone off that, really. Um, I f the one I kind of half looked at each way was Mystery Power, just because he didn't seem to like Goodwood very much when he ran behind Pinatubo, and he, he didn't really get a clear run either, so he might improve a little bit just for being back at Newmarket. Um, back down to six furlongs last time, didn't seem to suit as well. So he might improve again going back up in trip, and he's about 40 to 1. It's a hard race to see much behind Pinatubo. Um, Wichita, the fact he got beat by Moller Femme, and then beat a lot of their horses, I mean, Ropey Guest and Persuasion. Persuasion got absolutely hammered the time before in the Acom. It doesn't look the strongest in, in the world, so I don't think 4 to 1 is the best price about him. I can see positive for Mystery Power, something like that, finishing second. But yeah, Pinatubo is more than likely going to win this by miles. James? Uh, yeah, he's obviously going to be very difficult to beat. Um, he doesn't even need to run as well as he has been to win it on all known form. Uh, as regards to next year, yeah, I um, agree with what Jacob said. It's probably, oh, probably, if he turns up, he wins the Guineas. He's, he's, he's a higher level now than most Guineas winners, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's yeah. miles clear of that um, that dog, too darn hot, um, where he was this time last year. Right. Um, <laughs> <that's> great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think the, the, the programme probably would be sort of win the Guineas, maybe do the Irish Guineas if they fancy it. That's how much Godolphin are into the Irish Guineas. Um, then you've Did got... Bowery won it, so... Did he? So, yeah, they might do. Um, St. James's Palace, Sussex Stakes, and then maybe step him up to 10 furlongs for the Judmont, you would presume would be the... If everything goes according to plan. Um, I, I think it would be a mistake to go for the derby, obviously, um, out of Shamadal. There is stamina on the damn side, but he, I mean, he looks very quick, doesn't he? So I no. uh, don't think that would be the way. But yeah, so all those top mile races and then maybe do what uh, they did with Frank Collins, stepping up to 10 for the Judmont a little bit later in the summer. Uh, yeah, but uh, as for to, on the Dewhurst, yeah, like Jacob said, I thought I was being really clever early in the week, thinking... There's not going to be many horses turning up to this race. And positives is 16 for one. You can get three places. There might only be five or six runners. Uh, obviously, Ed O'Brien sent four, I think. Is it four or five? Yeah. Um, four. yeah. So there is nine runners, so a bit of a shame. But I think I, I don't I agree with Jacob. I don't really like the the Wichita form. I thought he, he beat it was a poor race last time and he was flattered by that. Um. I mean, Arizona was stuffed by Pinatubo. Positive got closer to Pinatubo than him, even though Pinatubo, Pinatubo could have improved again. But there's every chance that Positive's going to have improved. He's had a he's had a bit of a longer break than most of these. He's had a 42 day break, and it's actually the, the biggest break. So that you know, I mean, he could have <clears throat> come on quite a bit more. Um, so yeah, I think he's I think he's solid each way. 16 to one. I mean, you, you probably haven't got much shot of winning unless Pinatubo totally blows out, but that place, um, 
it's very live and you've got to remember there, that has been blocked and this i remember expert eye going off a very short price for this not as short as pinner tubo but i'm pretty sure he was odds on and he came last in it oh, so, seven or something yeah like exactly so it can happen they are two year olds after all and he's had he's run he's won five races is it and yeah. he's put in, in the last couple of performances have been massive so you never know when it could have been too much so that would be my each way play anyway but obviously pinner tubo is a monster yeah um same so each way I play on positive for me so that means two each way plays on positive or without um the fav players um we probably think pinatubo wins i mean that's not an original thought um jacob likes mystery power each way i agree on trip um even though i was spouting nonsense earlier in the week but yeah one mile is fine when i am um, dug into it i mean it's crazy that pinatubo actually heads the derby market i think at nines it's just mental. Like, I cannot see him getting the derby it's just at all. Just because he's the best two-year-old, you have to put him at the top of the market, really. Well, you don't. Have, well, um, that creates a betting opportunity. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. I don't so think anyone's good. backing Pinatubo for the derby. Some people will be backing it for the derby. Though, yeah. yeah, people who aren't very bright, but. So it creates an opportunity in the market by him taking some position there. But um, yeah, agreed positive each way um decent right then now be we get to when, it be funny when pinna tubo wins the derby now won't it yeah yeah, yeah. Funny, yeah. if he were if he, if he won the guineas in the derby and like blew them away probably getting towards frankel levels of being better than him frankel didn't go to the derby probably yeah reminded him some would say yeah You'd have to win them by quite far as well. Not, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very unlikely, very unlikely it happened. But if he did do it, he's not going to win the derby. I give you fifties that Pinatuba wins the derby. It's probably value to be fair. Good, you can recoup some of that money that you um <laughs> owe me on two down hot from last season. I don't. Well, I don't owe you any money. But I'm sure we had some bets on the podcast. He won. A, he won. A, he won a group one. He won two. Ah, he won a monkey group one. Then the six, six. What are you talking about? He's a monkey. He's a monkey. Main, main mile group races. He's a monkey. Um, is it? Is it? Can we now say in retrospect that I was right about two down hot? No, definitely not. I think I was right. I th he was. He was. It was always going to be hard to live up to the hype, but you weren't right. I That's said all one. season his oh, speed I figures thought... weren't that good. I mean, fair play to him. He's won a group one. He was probably he was he was still, he was still probably the best. Myler in the country, yeah. He, well, he was. It's that's not very much this year, though, is it really? No, no, it's not. It's not, <laughs> not I think, yeah, I'm, I think I was right. Well, you're not right about all else, so well, maybe I'll give you half a mark on that. All right, it's great. Me. Scott won that group one yet. Shit, yeah. Come <laughs> <laughs> that day, it's it's group three at Haydock, Haydock, yeah, on a bog. Group three. yeah, get a bog at Haydock and you might have a chance. Well, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> from that high quality horse, Matterhorn. <laughs> Matt, yeah, good off, Matterhorn. Yeah, on the old weather. Um, okay, good. Um, that's I'm Stuart <laughs> done. Um, Cesarovic, proper race now. Um, proper. Horrible big field handicap, 31 runners. Um, Over two, two, two miles, two furlongs. Oh, lovely. What could be better? Um, build me up Buttercup heads of the market for Willie Mullins with Frankie on. Um, and we've got a load of unexposed types following up. Um, this is probably the type that we kind of prefer to get into than these um, two-year-old racers. Um, so I reckon we'll probably spend about half an hour on the Cesarovic. Um, we will start with Jacob because you love this sort of stuff. What did you like anti post? Why did you like it anti post? And what do you like now? So I made the terrible idea of thinking sneaky getaway might run well in the Doncaster Cup. So that was my first anti post bet at 20s. He spent three weeks at 33s and he's now back to 20s. That was just on the assumption that he was the one in the Doncaster Cup that might end up ahead of his mark. He's obviously not now. Because um, you've had a few of these that have won in the past. Darley Sun ran well in the Doncaster Cup. Um, St. Michelle and Sweet Selection, the year Sweet Selection won both ran well and ended up about three stone well in. So that was the thing, thinking behind that one. <sighs> Don't think he's going to win. 
It's just yeah. kind of sat there now. Um, then the other one I liked, I kind of still like this one, is M Mr. Everest. Um, this one managed to win the Irish version of this, or was second in the Irish version of this. Um, and that was kind of like, he didn't really get into it, stayed too far back, started to make progress through the field. And it just basically, it was too late. It was under a five pound claim. He got two of him two lengths, basically on the line. Um, since then, he then went and won the Irish version of the November handicap with John Egan on, who rides today, which made me very... You like, you like John Egan, don't you, Jacob? <sighs> you think he's a good jockey? He gave Bobby Biscuit a great ride, didn't he, earlier in the week? He did, yeah. He managed to get a winner for once. <laughs> yeah, John Egan is not my favourite jockey. That's saying it politely. I think he's absolute fucking shit, but that's not the point. <laughs> can't say that now. You're an owner now. Don't <laughs> say that. Don't sit on the fence. You can't say that. You're in the game you, now. You You're not just... Hang on. If you say jockeys are shit or you tell horses to fuck off, you are in big trouble, mister. The police are coming around. There is people sorry. who will cry on social media. So you just... No one's, no one's ever done it before, though. So. I know, yeah, yeah, no one's ever, no one would be that hypocritical, would they, but. It, it happens. Um, mm. Yeah, then he he had a break after he won the November handicap, ran in a maiden hurdle, had another break, went to Galway, never got a run in their big handicap, the Great White Shark won. He watched it back, he didn't even, he barely got all first gear. Um, they were then running twice over hurdles. He won another maiden hurdle, and he got the easiest ride you will ever see in quite a big handicap there last time out. He basically didn't touch him until after the last, nudged him out, finished fourth, looked like a decent prep run. It was only 30 days ago, so he couldn't be fit. It just, it's just, he's not actually that badly rated on his wins last year, so he was fed in there, Cesarevich off three pound lower, and then won their November handicap off four pound lower. So he's probably still got a chance. Um, the other thing is, I don't like three year olds in this, so I've just basically ruled all them out. Tom's going to talk about that he loves them later, but they don't go well in this. To be a three year old to win this, Darley Sun was basically a group horse. Um, you had Ascatau go close, he won the Doncaster Cup and a couple of others. You had Colour Vision go close, who won the Gold Cup the next year. So if you think a three year old's going to win this, you're basically saying it's cup level horse. I mean, you can argue about a couple of them, but they're going to have to improve massively to win this, really. Do you think those, um, that three year old um, angle is statistically significant, Jacob? Statistically, you're going to tell me it's the other way around. But we'll see. But you just don't I, like him. I wouldn't want to be back in a three. I would not want a three year old in this. How well in was Dali Sun again? Was he fourteen pounds well? Yeah, fourteen pounds well in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even Southern France last year was like it placed in Group Twos. He came fourth in a ledger. He could only manage seventh, I think. So oh, yeah, but there's mitigating circumstances yeah, for that man. Yeah, yeah. It has that... to be either chucked in a stone or maybe more, or like a proper group or so just. Uh, I just there's, there's, a, there's plenty of evidence to show that it's not unless they are chucked in but I don't think any of those three year olds are massively chucked in really I just look Sam Michelle who was also in a stone well in he only finished 13th as a three year old and he was a group also as well they just yeah. for whatever reason you just don't want to be a three year old in this you want to have at least a few runs and the big but, field probably has something to do with it no this is, but, this is where stats tell stats can tell you the lie um, so it looks three-year-olds look really bad on the stats, but when you look at kind of their expected wins based on price and their actual wins, um, based on price, there's only been expected to be 1.13 three-year-old winners. There's been one. So like based on market expectations, it doesn't really kind of diverge much from what the market expects. So it might look shit that there's been a lot of three-year-olds that haven't won. However, based on price, hmm, they probably shouldn't. So it's not statistically significant, in my opinion. But we will see from the weekend. I dine out on your biases. That's your 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 biases and your perceptions. I dine out in the betting markets. Um, I can name three three year olds that have been favourite for this off the top of my head. I can name four now. Ascatel was favourite. Saint Michel was favourite. Southern France was favourite. Darley Sun favourite. 
Some, some total expected wins, 1.13. Statsman says so, uh, but no. Um, I mean, they're not, I'm not sure they're really working at the moment. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, James, I've heard you're going to side with a horse from a trainer. <laughs> that I'd never see you siding with, and I'm not sure you trust. I didn't no. know Ferrari had a runner. Who? <laughs> Richard Fahey. Oh, oh, Fahey. Oh, uh, Fahey. To be fair, like this, I, if I was the trainer, this is exactly what I'd do, but I just can never get his horses right, and they always seem to just not be trying when I back them. So I'm just like, I just don't back them anymore. I, I'm not backing this. I, it's, a, it's a selection, but I'm not backing it. Um, yeah, I like Timoshenko. I think that this has been the plan all along for like a year. Um, he's obviously on a he's on a six race winning streak after being handicapped up seven furlongs, and now he's uh, running over two miles, two furlongs. Um, so he went. He's been. He's gone from fifty eight to eighty six. Um. He gets a nice lightweight. Here. He's off eight stone six. Four year olds have got a decent record in it, uh, and he definitely stays the trip because he won over further um, at that race at Goodwood where they don't start in the starting stalls. Um, he's so we don't know how good he is yet. Cause he's on this winning streak. He he could. I mean, he didn't win by much last time, but um, there's nothing to say that he couldn't be. Uh, still well in. That was off a 355 day break. He comes here off a 73 day break. So we know he goes well off a break. Has also won off a 249 day break, but that was off 58. So he's obviously chucked in. But he still only won by one length. And then he only won by a neck off 62. So he's a horse that doesn't win by far. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been the plan. It's a slight concern with the ground. He's never ran on anything worse than good uh, i presume it's going to be sort of good to softish um yeah i just think it's got a lot going for him really when you've got all those extra places and stuff if he's still around sort of seven or eight to one mm. it might be hard to kick out the frame uh yeah that's, that's about it uh on timoshenko um yeah of course i can definitely see it um i, I took an angle against um even though he's won over that further trip that you mentioned, um, digging into um, Archipenko, who's his sire. Um, I looked at performance in listed class and above, um, and actually um, Archipenko's had no winners beyond one mile four um, in listed class and above. He's zero from nine with zero places. So I was taking on on that kind of angle. Um, he's already stayed two and a half miles. He's going to stay less. Yeah, I know, but what I'm talking about is more like the class ceiling. Um, so I'm, it doesn't mean. I mean, I think there's, I think there's angles there, right? So, but I'm just thinking, okay, what is there um, a shed load of um, kind of unexposure in his mark? And I'm just trying to say, okay, based on the the pedigree, is there say is there group quality in there? I don't think there is over the trip. Um, his dam is um, Nezhenka. Um, she had um, Nastenka, who won over one mile, right at seventy-one. So I was just looking for angles, and on a on a distance and on a trip, that was something that I found um, to oppose Timoshenko. I don't like the form of the Goodwood win. Um, it doesn't look good. The highest winner out of that has only won off seventy-four. Another horses have won out of the top ten finishers. However. The form of the Musselburgh run is really good, so this scares me. It's a bit of a fly in my ointment. Um, he, Timoshenko beat Austrian School that day, who's um, now rated 110, and, and also Artemon, who's gone up the handicap as well. So, um, yeah, good angle. I can see why you're going for it, but that was my angles to oppose Timoshenko. Um, what do we think about this fav? Build me a bu buttercup. Um, Mullins kind of coming over, booking Frankie. Um, second last time out behind um, Katasa, who's since um, followed up and run a group three at the Curra. Um, do we think solid and like a, a good lock or overhyped Irish horse coming over for a big field handicap? It's the same as Timoshenko, isn't it? You can you can see that happening. It's five to one now. 
there's yeah, 32 exactly. of them. It's like, uh, really, he's really Mullins is number one, so he's currently going to be favourite. Mullins has a good record in these types of races, so obviously won it last year with Lowe's son. He's the number one. What you, you know? What I mean, what, what else are you gonna say? Mm. Um, I don't. I don't think he's as chucked in as like we, we had Lord North in the Cambridgeshire. Obviously, another massive field handicap who, who went off a sort of similar price to what Bill McBurt could be. There's no way this horse has got sort of fourteen, fifteen pounds in hand. I don't think. If she did, she'd have beat in the Grand Bazaar at Ascot. Yeah, he yeah. should have. Twat. <laughs> I was on it. I was on the Grand Bazaar. That's all yeah, right. I remember, I remember, you, I remember you trumping it for about a week after. For the, rest yeah, the rest of the still, <laughs> still dining out on it. <laughs> um, what about this Land of Oz, the other Prescott horse? Um, three-year-old, so you might not have even uh, looked at it. Um, by Australia, very ground versatile. Trip, good. Australia's are looking really good going up to uh, um, the longest day in trips over two mile. Um, the was in um, the Melrose at York was just um, ahead of Just Huber, who's now rated ninety one. Um, so beat that horse that day and runs off ninety one here. Did you think anything about Land of Oz, or were you against on the age statistic? Um, just shout if you first person to shout can comment. At least it ran in the Melrose. So it, the form of that's decent. Yeah, it's, I like it. It'll, it'll stay. It's just a three-year-old. It just they just don't like it, and it just puts me off every three-year-old. Uh, yeah, it, if it have finished, if it have finished second in the Doncaster Cup last time to Stradivarius, then maybe and mm -hmm. been about two pounds, two stone well in. But he, he's he's probably not well in. No, Fun fact. Fun fact, I backed this horse once this year and it lost off a mark of 60. So, he can get fucked as well. <laughs> How far was that over? That was, that was over 14 furlongs, a red car. <laughs> a red car made in handicap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then he came out and won, uh, how many did he win? Four on the spin. And then got beat by, uh, and then he came third in the Melrose, and then he's won two against it. <laughs> it's quite incredible, really. Maybe, maybe James, there's like a lesson here. It's like when you've when you've picked one out, maybe follow it for a couple. Yeah, it was a odds on for most of them. Mm. No, I, I, should, I probably I probably should have backed it. Yeah, no, that was the one. Obviously, I should have done it. Was, you got to drop two pound as well. Like, yeah, that was should have stuck with him, but oh well. Um, Prescott, Prescott in it can't get him right. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, he's a rat. Um, to come to my selection, the one that I like. Um, I like Ranch Hand. Um, another three-year-old that will win. Another three-year-old that will win and will defy the naysayers and <laughs> um, prove. I tell you what, Tom, it's a good year um, for you to get the three-year-old angle right because there's a load of them in there. There's not usually this many, is there? Ooh, yeah, maybe I've got like a statistic, statistically significant chance of. A mm -hmm. there's, usually, there's usually one or two. When I, yeah, but there's loads. When isn't Tom it? said that the other day, I went through and looked at a ball to try and find where they finished, and most of them were midfield, were they? Yeah. Um, I'll be trumpeting if a three year old does win. Um, why do I like Ranch Hand? Um, Dunedin. Don't really know much about Dunedin. I don't think anyone does. the Melbourne Cup. Ah, well, that's and good. So Hong Kong days as well. Ah, there you go. So he's not in my UK database. So. I only know that because that just Hubert that I tipped the other week is by Dunderman and he went up in trip and I was like, oh, fucking hell, he's stamina all over the place. This is going to suit. So that's the only reason I knew that. Oof, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, this, one's a, this one's a lock in then. Um, in the UK and Ireland, it's on my database, it's got very unexposed but very high strike rate at two miles and two miles plus. Um, the, my main angle into ranch hand, apart from being a three year old, which is great for the says, um, the form from the new market run is really hot. Was behind Spanish Mission, who went over and won that group one in the US, like Simcox sent Spencer over. Um, was ahead of Wald Stern, who's now rated 105. Um, was seven lengths off Nerf Road, who's now rated 108. 
um, but has showed significant upside and ones off 98 here. Really like this ranch hand. I think he wins. At least it's well in. It's a full pound well in this one. <laughs> Good for me. He's going to be absolutely gasping for air about two furlongs out when he's like, fucking hell, this is far. <laughs> So good. When Mullins' seven jumpers have come alongside. <laughs> yeah. You especially with, especially with, a, a bit, with a bit of cut in the ground as well. That's the other thing with the Mullins horses. They're used to running in bogs. If there's, if there's a bit, I think there might be a little bit of rain due, and it's already sort of good to soft. So if it gets it's much softer, you would, you'd probably be siding with the Mullins lot. Yeah. Um, so summarize selections for the Cesarovich James. Uh, yeah, as long as there's not too much rain, uh, I think Tim O'Shea is pretty solid. We don't know how good he is yet. Doesn't win by much. Uh, lovely, lovely lightweight. Four-year-olds have got a good, decent record in this. They've won two out of the last three. Uh, yeah, solid enough. Definitely says the trip. So, yep. should, be, should be there or thereabouts. Jacob? Mount Everest. And if he wins, I might change my opinion on John Egan. Ooh, um, ranch, ranch hand for the three year olds. <laughs> Taking it home. I think there's five of them in there if I count it right. So. There's the first five you can put on for. <laughs> um, anything in this Bodicea stakes? 445, six furlong? I haven't. Oh, I had something written down for this. Let me look. Yeah. Uh, the one. That I'm going to remember the name of Last Empire and um, ran behind a couple at air uh, last time. So it was K Armo, wasn't it? Uh, let me try and find it. Yeah, K Armo and Lady in France. Uh, she was completely off her feet the entire way. She didn't seem to like the ground or the fact she went down to five and a half. Uh, before that, she'd absolutely sluiced up in a heavy ground handicap. The second was Fantasy Keeper. They went and won the sprint finale next time out. Uh, came from the dark with behind there. Gabriel the Devil was second next time out. I think coming back up slightly, even though it's only half a furlong, but mainly the fact the ground's going to be quite soft. She's going to improve again. Um, Danny Tudor's kept on there instead of the other Clipper Logistics one. Quite liked that. Mm, nice. James, anything? Uh, no, nothing for me. No, uh, nothing for me as well. Thanks, Jacob. 520 out? No. No. He, well, there's only one horse that we were speaking about a bit earlier. Indeed. Um, oh, yeah, I've got over this. Sorry. Was it Indeed? No. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then, Jacob. Go on. John yeah. Egan's horse, is it? It's it's not written by John Egan, surprisingly. Yeah, it came over from France. Seemed to like a bit of cut in the ground. Managed to win at Newmarket on good off 100, which was quite impressive. Um, then went to Goodwood, was drawn miles out wide. Went too fast early and then broke a blood vessel. So didn't have a chance last time. Um, despite he's been running in handicaps, he's not that far off these on ratings. And he might just be improving a little bit. That was as far as I got in that. So you like Indeed. Yeah. Don't you two lads like Chilean? Not in this race, it would need I'd to be like him. I'd like heavy. him in a bo in a bog in a handicap, but not in a group three, and which is a bit on all right ground. He needs a bog. He's in the sale. <laughs> Are we gonna buy him? No, no, he's rated ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite bad. He beat he beat Study of Man on heavy. Yeah. Yeah. he would. He would. I was really hoping that he was. There was um. There was a race at um. Salisbury, Salisbury, they they called off, yeah, and it was so heavy they called it off. But I was like, no, let him run, let him run. Um, but and that was a that was a class two handicap, and it wasn't even that good a handicap. So I would have been very interested in that, but unfortunately they they cancelled the uh, the the meeting. Um, James, which one did you like? Matterhorn, the what? one you were lagging earlier. What? Yeah, this is this is Matterhorn's level, man. It's. He's, he's not quite a group two horse. Not, not on the sand like. though. In nah, the he's, sand. he's good. He's good on the on the turf. Um Is he? Was uh wasn't far off Desert Encounter. Um two stars to go and and then Desert Encounter's come out and won again since and looks better than ever. 
and he was where was he he was second ahead of Pinchek, who's the closest market rival i think uh, last time out uh, i think it's a dropping dropping class and yeah this is this is sort of his level i don't think it's that strong uh it's a group three isn't it yeah so i don't think it's that strong of a group three um a lot of these are sort of uh, aquarium like can't see that win just gone to jane chapel high they'll be making that lose for a while i'd imagine uh we've discussed chile and cross bat and just looks a shadow of what he was um dolphin vista is one last time out but i think i think that one's better so indeed mark i don't i, I mean he could he, he could he definitely could be improved he's on the up but i think matterhorn's above him and then i don't really like the rest of them and he's, he's got the better of pin check so i think he's pretty solid hmm. this Fair is enough. probably his trip as well isn't it yeah, yeah. it's it's a lovely little trip for him he's you know i mean he, he's he, he's, he runs well at eight and ten so definitely gonna be good at the nine i mean he's, he's favorite isn't he he's gonna be favorite so i think he's pretty, so, yeah i think he's pretty solid i think i'll be backing him mm. Mm. very nice yeah um good um anything at york no mm, it's not the best york card is it no absolutely impossible some of the races the first two the york always is <laughs> yeah i mean york's tough at the best of times not um, never mind when you get a tough card like jesus christ that sprint handicap was awful when i looked at it earlier jesus it'd be interesting to see uh, forest range dropping down into a handicap he's been running in like group twos and stuff i know he's obviously got a lot of weight but i'd just be interesting to see how he goes i don't know if he's lost his way a little bit but I mean, the sprint handicap is a bit like, oh, I don't know, can't even be bothered to look through it, to be fair. Uh, um, was in the last from the Maiden, James Likes. You do you, are. Do you remember the Maiden where Pablo Escobar got beat by a line of duty? And Ron, Sir Ron was in. Sir Ron, oh. yeah. The six from that's running in the handicap. First time oh, out for the Godolphin, Dubai icon. All oh, right, yeah, I was looking at Dubai Icon earlier. I just couldn't. I did, the pedigree wasn't shining out to me, and this is a this is a bit of a funky race, and it twenty runners at York isn't really isn't really bread and butter. Um, I'll have another look at it. I'll have another look at him. How yeah. long has he been off for? Then was that his last race? Twenty three. Twenty three days he's been off. All right. Oh yeah, he's, he's won since. So. All right, yeah, he might be interested in that from when we went ladies first just because she was behind even marie last time and that race has just worked out so well uh with even marie going on to win and there's a couple of others as well she'll be a bigger price east to be loves it there and not he as well so you had the first one the third one next time out and i think the fourth also one next time out and those seven lengths back to the fifth so she, she could have a chance again. I mean that um that Dubai icon is the one who's just totally unexposed and he going up and trip as well. Like it's one of them where yeah, he could just piss up, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Um we were gonna mention the Chepstore card as well. Um I think probably Jacob on your request. Um what's interesting about the chep store card of course the jumps are kind of um ramping up and a back just tell us a little bit because you, you you're a bit of a history man like tell us a little bit about the chep store card and, and why it's interesting and maybe how it can shape the um the future jumps campaign yeah so your chep store card is basically you just want a notepad and just to write down horses that mainly novice chases horses that jump well so a couple of years, years ago you could have had a little bit escape for instance, went round Shepstow, jumps absolutely lovely behind Mia's storm, um, got tired and finished second and went on to obviously be a group one novice. Um, you've had a few. I think last year, one I had written down was Benny's Bridge. You went on to win at Cheltenham at Handicap. They're just basically the big trainers, just this is their first opportunity to actually send some horses out. And they tend to just send loads of nice horses in the novice races lots of them get very easy rides and then you've actually got them all noted down for the rest of the season 
Um, for instance, you've got the Persian War to begin with, horses that were running that before. You could have had Silver Nyako Conti, Fingal Bay, Black Lions ran in this. It's just a really nice card where you can get basically into the jump season, as James loves so much. I do. In March. <laughs> You've actually started studying a bit this year, haven't you? Good in, it's good in March. So that second week in March is really good. <laughs> yeah, so there's a couple of other races this week. Mainly the, the novice hurdles and the novice chases. They're always good. Um, the silver trophies on the Saturday can sometimes work out really well. The main one was two years ago when Sam Spinner was second in it. And basically everything that was behind that day went and won the next couple of starts. So watch the novice chases, watch that silver trophy and just write a few down that you think have either travelled well and obviously don't win a bit, or in the novice chases, especially horses that jump well. Yeah, good. Um, one thing that I did like for um, Chepstow, trainer angle. There's the two mile handicap hurdle tomorrow for four year olds. Um, Nichols has farmed it in recent years, so he won it last year with Grand Sansi. Um, he won it in no he was second in 2017 with Dolos. Um, won it in 2016 with Diego de Charmille. 2012 Hinterland, Dom Tallinn 11, Escort Men 2010. So he runs Scaramanga at 4.30 tomorrow in the two-mile handicap hurdle. So four-year-olds, so that could be a decent angle. Um, I mean, he's sending, um, I think, so they've, they've come out firing, basically. Um, he had he had two winners yesterday at Wing Canton um, in Get the Appeal and Oleg. Um, and he's sending Trevelyan's Corn, Flick the Voyou, Truckers Lodge, Scaramanga and Silver Forever tomorrow did, to Chepstow. Did you see the prices of them there, Tom? Oh, yeah, 9 to 2, 2 to 1, 15 to 8, 7 to 2, 6 to 2. 2 to 9, evens, 4 to 6. Oh, really? So Thanks, for that, thanks for that insight, Tom. Well, welcome. Jesus. Welcome. Wow. Thanks for all that. He then had another one beat at 8 to 11 and one beat at 5 to 6. Ex expected wins for actual wins too. Minus two wins from expectation. Um, good. Actually, I might do that. Let's have a look. Last seven days. Is this interesting for you? No. No? Okay. I like that Scaramanga though. So do I. Good. Good um... It depends. Just with the, the start of the jump season, you, it's unless you, it's the handicap chases where they've run for a few seasons, you know the ones that run well fresh. You could be just hitting your head against a brick wall with these with horses that either are still running for fitness or are very, very green still over hurdles. I, I'd potentially just be leaving it until earliest November meeting, unless you see something at like Aintree in a couple week's time that runs just, well just fresh leave, just leave it till march yeah. <laughs> it's your tactic james i can't say anything change that right. on the sand until march um i want to talk about dundalk jesus it's even yeah. on yeah it's on tomorrow this meeting last year 5 30 tomorrow night mick alford won the first with player del puente 6.30. Um, Mick Alford won the third race with Luna's Luck. He did quite well to win the 6.30, considering there's a 6.15 and a 6.45. No, that's just last year. They're not last year. Hard last year. He's um, building to something. <laughs> 7 o'clock, he won the fourth race with Alan Bill Zane. Um, and 9 o'clock, he won the last with Lady Deveshki. So Mick Alford had a four-timer on this card last weekend now last week i blew my lord a bit early and i declared that uh it was back and red panty night was back and mick party uh mick, mick, mick party mick party, <laughs> mick, party. <laughs> mick, mick, mick party mick party was having a halford mick party was having a halford um <laughs> mick halford's having a party so no, it's called mick party now i'm afraid mick party, <laughs> right. so so tomorrow night mick party Right, and he's sending Mick Party is <laughs> sending 
<laughs> I mean, we a two-year-old in the first, so that's always a good sign. <laughs> so he's sending airlift in the 515 to the race that was won by Player de Puente last year. 645 Sky 7, 715 Gugain Barra, 745 Massif Central, and 815 Spelga. I mean, they're all decent prices as well. So Mick Party is having a party <laughs> tomorrow night at Dundalk. So it's Ren Panty night again. So it's the same night as last year. However, I'm a bit scared. So I'm going to do a, a massive kind of lucky something. Um, so I'm going to back how all many, of them. How many horses did you say? He's got five, five, running, five running tomorrow. Five. So we're having a lucky 31. Lucky 31. All right. So we're having a lucky 31 tomorrow. However, I'm a bit nervous because in the last seven days, McAlford's zero from three. In the last 14 days, he's zero from 12. In the last 30 days, he's one from 29. <laughs> yeah. So the he's, been getting them, he's been getting them well handicapped for, for the tomorrow, clearly. Do you reckon he's been getting them ready? It's a little well, mid party. Know how to party. <laughs> so so that's it. So Mick Party <laughs> tomorrow night at Dundalk. Sky Seven's got a ten pound claim on. Ooh, now we're talking. Getting ready for the party. Expected what? wins. Ah, oh, it's Run all good. Through, it's all good. Run through the horses and times again, Tom. Don't don't worry about it. It's all good, right? Expected wins two point seven nine. Actual wins two. So it looks like he's been shit. Oh, he's in form. But he's actually bang on form. In, in great form. So what were the what were the horses in the times again? McPie. For McPie, Panty, Panty Night. Um five fifteen airlift. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, go on. Six forty five sky seven. Ten pound claimer. Seven fifteen Gugain Barra. Same claimer with seven. <laughs> Don't know what's happening there. Um, 745. You can't that one, innit? Massive Central. Um, 815 Spelger. Mick Party. And that's the trainer, Mick Party. <laughs> yeah, the trainer is you searching for is Mick. <laughs> I, <get Mick. laughs> I, I was looking for it, I couldn't find Mick Party there. <laughs> oh, Mick Party's the trainer. So that's Dundalk's <laughs> 